so my Master of Skip adventures have uh, finished up and uh, yeah, finally dragged the moth out of the grass and uh, get to put it back together. So uh, yeah, huge thanks to everyone that watched that Must Ice Gift series. Um, obviously a bit different to what I normally yeah, make, but uh, yeah, it was overall a really enjoyable experience and I enjoyed the sort of one design racing because I haven't done that for a long time. But uh, yeah, that gave me some time to kind of ponder the moth and what I want to do to it next and yeah, watch those few videos I made on this boat over and over. I've only actually sailed this boat twice, even though I got it in about August, and it's now the end of January. Um, I sort of was watching that footage from Portland and thought, I need a ride height adjuster, even though it did have one. It was a turnbuckle, so I had to get in here and uh, wind this by hand every time I wanted to change it. And uh, that just meant it took a while to find the optimum setting uh, for a given day. And uh, I like to sail these boats, uh, particularly when it's kind of in that marginal foiling conditions down at Easter on the lake and stuff where you can get up foiling in the puffs and then you get to fly around on the very edge of control um, with just a little bit of foil in the water and it gets this kind of like wishy-washy feeling and it's just amazing so to make it easier to get that feeling I've uh, created this on the 3d printer I got the cheapest 3d printer on the internet for Christmas um, thanks to my parents and my uh, grandparents contributed and uh, yeah now I'm able to make uh, little parts uh, really quickly uh, like this 3d printer is amazing for the money um, I think it's the any cubic neo and uh, it just pumps stuff out so fast and I haven't had a single issue with it yet and uh, I'm just making stuff on fusion 360 and then uh, yeah hitting print and it just works and this is using PLA filament so nothing fancy and uh, yeah so my plan is instead of uh, reinventing the wheel and trying to do threaded plastic and stuff I'm just gonna basically make a cover for the existing turnbuckle so that's the turnbuckle and then I'm just gonna put this in there and then put that like so and then uh, yeah there'll be a bolt that goes through there to hold it all together and uh, that should do the trick so and that obviously goes here this is the fourth attempt at making one of these uh, because the first two I was worried were either too big or too long or too short or um, the final version 3 uh, I had the threads that were quite sort of aggressive uh, or a lot of threads and they were very fine and not very deep but I was worried that the 2mm Dyneema was going to jump out of it because it's happened to me before on other ride height adjusters and it's just so annoying so I thought I'll go real aggressive 4mm grooves um, I took the number of threads from like 16 to 12 so it's a little bit of a sort of coarser adjustment but uh, yeah I'm hoping that'll do the job so now I just need to find a bolt that fits through there and uh, get a nut on the other side maybe some Loctite, probably attack it with my Dremel and uh, get that on and then I can start on these tramps. I realised that explanation might have been a bit vague in terms of what I'm actually doing and I've had a few subscribers reach out to me to ask me to slow down and explain stuff in a more comprehensive manner as uh, some of them are new to the sport and since there's nothing I like doing more than talking about boats I'm uh, happy to explain uh, yeah, how this works and I've done a quick sketch to help. So basically a moth has two foils, uh, a main foil on the bottom of the centerboard and a rudder foil on the bottom of the rudder, just like the wings and the uh, horizontal stabilizer on the back of the plane. The flight control system on a moth is a bit different to those other foiling uh, classes like the NACRA 17 and stuff because uh, it has a flap on the uh, main foil that's automatically adjusted by a clever system of uh, push rods and levers to maintain in theory a set altitude above the water. The stick hanging off the front that everyone asks about all the time is called a wand and uh, on the bottom of that is a paddle and that bounces along the surface of the water and lets the boat know uh, how high it is above the water at a given moment. The wand is mounted as far forward as we can get it on a 500mm long bowsprit so that it can sense what is coming such as waves and adjust the altitude accordingly hopefully. When the boat goes down uh, say it's, then it's uh, lower than we would like uh, or closer to the water the wand's forced backwards, which uh, pushes the flap on the main foil down. This then creates more lift, just like the flaps on a plane, and pushes the boat higher out of the water. And then when we go too high, the wand goes forward and the uh, flap on the foil comes up, reducing lift and lowering the boat down closer to the surface. So what I'm doing here is installing a system moths have had for over a decade, essentially a way to adjust your altitude above the water while sailing along. So you can be like, oh, I'm a bit low here, and you just pull this rope around this yellow drum. It either lengthens or shortens the pushrod, essentially changing the amount of pushrod between the wand and the foil. 
So if I wind it out all the way and make the push rod really long, the wand can go as far forward as it wants, but the flap still will be held like all the way down. And uh, then this will happen and you'll just get absolutely launched into space, which you've seen on this channel a few times. And uh, yeah, that applies for the uh, other extreme where you can wind it too far in and then uh, you'll be at like full negative flap even with the wand uh, all the way back against the boat uh, with the hoe in the water and you're just not going to take off. So yeah, I hope that sort of clarifies what I'm trying to do here. And uh, yeah, let's go back to the video. I think that'll do just fine. So I'll nip that up and uh, then go get the Dremel and grind off that uh, little bit of excess bolt that's going to be hanging out, I reckon. So there we have it, uh, ride height adjusted is installed, uh, it's not too pretty, um, but that's okay. Um, I probably should have countersunk those bolts in a bit further, but I was sort of running out of material as well, because there's uh, not a lot of plastic there left to go into. Uh, hopefully the rope will just kind of hop over the uh, bolt and nut that I dremeled down and we'll see how we go. Um, seems like a good idea so that I can find the right settings quicker and uh, get the bugs cam operating in the window that I want it to be working in. Okay, so it's uh, basically 10 o'clock, so I think that'll do for tonight. I've got the tramps uh, sort of ready to go on. Uh, I've got the cleats on the right side, blocks are all on the right side and sorted. Uh, tomorrow I've just got to uh, yeah, get the wing bars apart, uh, get the controls off I want to take off and so on. And uh, yeah, whack the tramps back on, get the bladders in them and uh, get everything tensioned up again. So uh, yeah, I'll put the boat away for the night, clean up and uh, yeah, go to bed. Okay, so another day on the Moth Project. Um, should be able to put a dint in it today. What a day it is to be a sailing enthusiast in Australia. Because uh, in the middle of the night, just 160 kilometres that way, past those houses, over the paddock and into the ocean, uh, the Bank Populaire old team went past as it went through Bass Strait, doing about 37 knots, and then uh, Sedebo pulled into Hobart. So I've never seen an old team. Don't get them in Australia, unless something's gone wrong. And uh, it's so cool that there was one just 160 kilometres away. So uh, there's still a couple more to come past, so maybe they'll get a bit closer. But uh, yeah, what an exciting day. Anyway, I am going to put on these new hiking straps that a subscriber, Scott, from uh, Western Australia kindly sent me. You noticed in the Portland video uh, that I was yeah, struggling with the stretch on these seatbelt ones. So yeah, even if as tight as I can get them, by the time I go sailing, they'll I come in and yeah, they'll be all stretched out and it just makes it so hard because you end up hiking sort of lower than you want. Um, Scott's got one of like the fastest Mac 2s in Australia, weapon of a boat, and uh, he had these ones spare that came with it. So huge thanks to Scott because this isn't something I ever would have probably gone out and uh, spent the money on. Um, those were keeping me on the boat and uh, that's all I was worried about. But these will be a thousand times better. So they've got uh, like carbon sailcloth uh, through them. So uh, you've got unidirectional carbon fibre running up and down and then fibres going across uh, to sort of yeah keep them together and underneath they've got a bit of webbing for grip and uh, a bit of padding so those aren't, aren't going to stretch at all so thanks Scott
Well, as you can see, the main mods I made to the tramps are replacing the crappy uh, eyelets from Amazon and Bunnings that I put in uh, with proper Sailmaker stainless steel eyelets. And then I got a 15mm webbing block added back here, which is for the ride height control rope to kind of do a loop. I haven't quite figured that out yet, but I'll find a way to make it work. But I'll uh, just get the tramps on first and then see how it all looks. I've got the wings back together I can crank this on. If I did it in the other order I would have had issues getting the um might go under on this wrap just to try and Almost 10 o'clock at night, got the tramps on, finally, uh, it wasn't too hard because I've done most of the ropes and stuff last time, I uh, had to make a new one on that side because I'd uh, cut it a bit short when I ran out of Dyneema last time, but uh, yeah, so stoked with those hiking straps that uh, Scott sent over, um, they're just stiff, you can just feel it, and uh, they tensioned up really nicely, so tomorrow I'll have to come out and set up the right height adjuster system, get a take up going up in here. Um, have to design a bracket for the GPS to go down in here somewhere, get that going on the 3D printer and uh, try and get it all ready for hopefully Sunday if there's some breeze. Uh, yeah, so I'll go put the boat back up in its paddock and uh, yeah, go to bed. Okay, so third day in a row, uh, or third day this week working on the moth. Um, got the tramps on last night as you can see, uh, it's not quite finished. There's still uh, a lot of tidying up of uh, yeah, lashings and stuff I've got to do. Uh, I've got to rerun all the control lines, get all the take ups on. Um, it's Friday night now, so the uh, forecast for Sunday looks amazing. So I'm hoping that uh, yeah, I'll be able to get it up to Listerfield Lake on Sunday and uh, go for sale. But uh, first, there's a fair bit to do, so I'm going to put the vein cutter and one control back on and uh, get all that sorted. Then I can fit the ride height adjuster system uh, without worrying about sort of interference between the existing control lines. If I try and do the ride height first, I'll definitely forget where the old stuff goes and then uh, have something rubbing on something else or something like that. So uh, yeah, I'll do that and uh, we'll go from there.
Okay, so this is the part where it's gonna get interesting. I've got all the control lines in like normal. I didn't bother recording that because I only showed that like three moth episodes ago when I put the boat together the first time. Um, so yeah, this is a moment of truth to see if uh, yeah, all that stuffing around with the ride height adjust is gonna work. Like I said earlier, I've uh, decided to use 2mm Dyneema, which is a little bit tricky to splice. Um, like it's probably, as, I know people might splice kite line, but uh, yeah, using a normal splicing needle, that's pretty much the limit of what I can do. So I'm just gonna try and do a nice little uh, continuous system somehow. I'll just have to sort of freestyle it as I go and uh, then create a take up system that sucks it up in here. And I'll just see if I can get away without having to take the foredeck off to do that. I might be able to, because I reckon the take up might be able to sit just here, because obviously the tension on this doesn't really change. Um, unlike sort of a one system where you've got, yeah, 30 centimeters of rope coming in and out. Um, this one's gonna stay sort of tight all the time. And I just want uh, firm tension on it. Um, I'm just going to try and use the shocks instead of uh, blocks and then I'll just put a 20 mil block up front here somewhere. Um, I'm hoping because of the 2 mil rope the surface area is not very high so hopefully I don't get too much friction uh, using shocks instead of blocks but yeah let's uh, get into it and see what happens. Um, I'm just going to attach the shocks with my favourite fluoro cable ties. Um, it's just an easy way to do it and uh, obviously these are pretty strong and the system's got no load on it. And it gives me the flexibility to move stuff around. So, because uh, it's going to have to come off this drum at a pretty accurate angle, um, it'll be good to be able to, yeah, uh, move things back and forward to get it working correctly. Okay, so here we go, all finished. So theory is, pull this one, and the boat goes down by shortening the push rod, and then pull the other one, the boat goes up. So I don't have the biggest range of movement. I might have to take some wraps off. Um, Pretty much the boat back together. I've got to quickly find the clevis pin to go through the fork on the foil, and uh, then I'm going to try and find a way to mount my nova sail uh, to this boat because I still haven't found a good spot for it. So I think I'm going to try and model up another bracket that goes around here. It's just challenging because I've got to get it out wide enough to go around the bang and the Cunningham, and then come back in and sort of sit here on kind of an angle so I can see it from sitting up on the wings. And uh, yeah, I'll get onto that now. And, Go put the boat away and uh, yeah, start editing this video, I suppose.
Okay, so back at Listerfield Lake again. Um, to Monday night. I uh, tried to come down last night, but uh, yeah, it was just northerly, just pumping down the lake, like the whole way down this valley. The gusts were just like black, and people were getting thrown off their inflatable stand-up paddle boards and stuff. So I thought I better uh, not try and sail in that. But uh, today there's more like an established southerly because a cold front came through at about midnight. Uh, it's a bit fluky and kind of weird. There's a lot of uh, sort of yeah strange clouds going on and the rain's coming through from sort of the northwest so who knows what we'll get down on the bay it's probably blowing about 14 to 20 so hopefully that provides sort of just enough steady pressure to keep it coming through here and i get some decent gusts like that one there at the moment i just need sort of enough to foil and get a feel for this ride height adjuster that i've uh, got set up now uh, in the boat and uh got a bit of an override there but sort of running out of time to fix it got the gps installed um yeah, just need one good gust to foil and uh, yeah, get a feel for it and uh, I'll be happy. So uh, yeah, let's get out there. Even though it was 40 degrees yesterday, it's still uh, rather cold. Three, two, Oh, so close. Okay, so I made it back. Um, yeah, obviously a bit frustrating uh, when you yeah, get so close to foiling so many times. I think my top speed was 9.2 knots. Um, probably being on the small foil didn't help. I'll have to try and see if I can get the Mach 2 high lift out of the old red boat to fit in this one. I think it'll work because uh, both of them run Mach 2 verticals. Uh, it'll just be whether the angle of attack uh, yeah, works in this centerboard case. Uh, obviously you've still got three holes in the top of the vertical. Uh, so you can adjust it and uh, remember that uh, old Mach 2 vertical on the other boat that was one I got that was broken and repaired it um, so I could swap it over from like uh, the custom uh, vertical the red boat had to a Mach 2 one um, I'm just worried that yeah it'll be thicker through here and might not fit because this boat has a very sort of tight centerboard case so uh, yeah I think uh, next time I sail I'll just bring it with me chuck it in there and uh, yeah bring the angle of attack gauge and uh, see how it looks because uh, I'm sure in some of those puffs today I could have got up if I had the big foil on even if it hurt me a bit at the top end but uh yeah I suppose there are worse places to be uh, if you don't have a go you'll never get the foil in uh yeah marginal conditions like that the right height adjuster did work really well um I at least was able to pull more lift in while sailing which is what it was designed to do so yeah that was a win uh, there was no interference on my GPS bracket so I was really happy with that um you can see here I've got a bit of a gap yeah, below that for the Vang and uh, the cleats still go back and forward too so yeah I'm claiming that one as a win uh, that only took two attempts so yeah um, all I've really got to do before I sail next is uh, fix up my crappy splice here that's uh, come undone 
that was sort of a crisscross thing under this block but uh yeah viewers of the channel will remember in episode five i did that one in the dark uh at about 11 30 on the footpath so i'm saying uh yeah that one's probably not quite uh as rookie as it looks uh considering it was dark but yeah uh there's a marathon on uh saturday so that's uh further up into the mountains at sugarloaf the breeze looks good i'll aim to go there um can have a lot of editing to do between uh yeah now and then but uh yeah hopefully i'll be back if you like the content please like and subscribe uh it makes such a difference to yeah other sailors finding the content uh yeah thanks for watching <laughs>